you seem like the same person you were 20 years ago 25 well, years if, ago like you know but like you're not telling you i don't well i've watched so, a lot of people uh i call it taking the ride uh-huh well you just can't you, i am amazing <laughs> like whatever you like what it and you just you know treating people like shit and doing all of that i got into this business because i didn't want to have a job and i wanted to have a fun job so my big thing is like if you're going to work with me you're going to have fun mm -hmm. so like when we did old dads or we did club soda or any of the things that i've done you know when i'm at atc or whatever like i we have fun you know what i mean yeah. i'm bringing coffee we're joking around i make fun of myself i you know learn people's names like you know i did a name thing. tags I did a thing like last night while I was talking, they were like uh, Monica Levinson, who was one of the uh, big driving forces on Old Dads. You know, her alma mater was uh, Syracuse. So we did a talk to like people in the business that, from Syracuse, that went to Syracuse yeah. University. Yeah. So one of the things they were asking, one of their tips was, you know, what, what's some of your tips? And, you know, people were saying their things. And my thing was like, feed the crew. That is the biggest thing. I don't give a shit if it's Domino's pizza some fucking cough donuts one morning, just some sort of surprise nourishment that shows you give a shit about yeah. them. And then you, you're not going to have any problem. Get, get some sort of pool going. Yeah. Something they can gamble I, yeah, on I, because their job standing around waiting for us to get something we like is fucking backbreaking work. Yeah. So if they're looking forward to, you know, if they hear rumors that, you know, we got a barbecue truck today or uh, you start the day with like a coffee truck or something, um, it's the best money you'll ever spend. I, on yeah. those things, we did uh, Mike Bertolina at All Things Comedy. I told him, I said, we should get some food trucks. He goes, I'm on it. And like, Mike is like, uh, he's Italian. So you, you knew it was going to be first class. You just knew it. <laughs> uh -huh. So I... Uh, I, I yeah I have a a, a you huge, also remember huge, huge job loves. you remember like you don't you had that joke about like driving a pallet or, or driving a forklift or working oh, yeah, in a no. dental dentist office yeah I can see it and I feel like you can see it you remember it I love those jobs right but I'm saying like you're not that different than warehousing you. was the funny most fun fucking job I ever had it was uh, the most fun. I mean, all I did was just, we had the fucking radio on. Everyone was laughing. Once a week, we all played softball against another warehouse and just got fucking hammered playing softball and would drive home drunk. It was like fucking the 80s, right? Everybody did impressions of everybody. It did impressions <laughs> of everybody in the carpeted area. And it was like, yeah, it was almost like our own little SNL show where there was like, in, in like in the warehouse was all like the creative people. That's where I, I started playing drums because it was like, ours was a jock town and these kids were from Walpole and that was more music. And I didn't know you could actually learn to play guitar and could play back in black. And I saw these guys doing it. I'm like, that's fucking cool. And I actually loved, it was so much shit that I loved, but I learned at that point from my experiences that I wasn't shit and what I thought and what I liked didn't matter. And my own happiness and my own thing was not important. My opinions were not important, none of that stuff. So that was sort of the hole I was in. And it was just through meeting people like that. So. The warehouse was was musicians. It was class clowns, fucking addicts. Everybody like a lot of problem with authority, and it was like um, I mean I remember I remember losing a job because of my problems with this fucking fat fuck. I mean he was so fat like he was like just he would have to swing his arms when he was walking. Right, big uh -huh. stuffed shirt would come out there. And all these fucking assholes. I didn't like that warehouse job. It, that, there, was a, there was a darkness. The drug use was heavier. Too much? Yeah, it was like, yeah, like, I, like a couple guys I worked with there, you know, were dead within 10 years. But the other, first one, the softball one, that was fun. That was Budweiser and wine coolers and fucking listening to the outfield. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. It was that eighties. It was a band. No, no that was 80s. it. Was like yeah. pre that movie Wall Street and Platoon yeah. when shit started getting heavier again. Less than zero. Like there was yep. a lot of dark shit came out in the late eighties as, mm -hmm. as people were understanding that cocaine maybe wasn't this miracle drug. His fat fuck. He just just came walking out. Big stupid fat fuck. And uh, everyone would like you know oh he'd be out there and they'd fucking you know try and start working harder and harder. And I went the opposite route. He'd come out and I would just fucking look at him. 
just long enough to know, to let him silently know that I don't give a fuck. The next week I, I asked for a raise <laughs> and then I got laid off. Did I, you know, like, I'm not getting this fucking raise or you felt like you deserved it? No, I did deserve it. I was one of the best fucking workers that guy had. I just wasn't going to fucking show him whatever that means. And that was one of those things where that had nothing to do with that fat bastard. That had to do probably with shit with my dad or something like that. But I just remembered like him walking out and he knew it. He felt it. Everybody like, oh, oh doing yeah. This and, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hello, yeah. Mr. So-and-so. Yeah. I, I just, there was just something about that. But the goal was like to be a producer, like a traditional producer. Like ma making beat tapes for and people. sending them here. You like anything? Yeah. Give me 20 grand. Exactly. Like sending okay. them to producers, sending yeah. them to contests, submitting, whatever. Yeah. I tried to do that for like a decade, basically, you know, just very unsuccessfully. And are you like, what are you doing for money? I waiting tables. I got. Good. You know, I customer you, support. I was hoping you would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Good, good, good. Yeah. Great, good, good, great. Yeah. I mean, all Real sorts of shit, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a ton. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, executive assistant. I did like mortgage loan servicing. Um, I got my my real estate license for like half a year. Miserable. 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 Because real that, estate license. You know what the thing about it is, is that when you work, it's like I you don't want to do any of these jobs, but like the difference between waiting tables and a real estate license is like waiting tables. You don't have to give a shit about it, but the, you get your real estate license. Suddenly, like you have to concentrate and work on this thing that you despise. So yeah. it's like I just very quickly realized, like, why would I do that? And then I just went back to waiting tables. So, yeah. And did you get better at beats? Mm -hmm. Did the beats get better? I think so. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, over a decade. I just kept like doing it and doing it. And are you performing at all? Not at all. So you're not making just... a cent. What was your bottom? <laughs> well, oh man, a very clear bottom actually, which was lo I lost this job. I, it was it was another customer support job in Dallas working. Which I assume they all are. They're all that. <laughs> it's just a bunch of like nameless corporate yep. business parks. Office park. Yep. Yeah. Just a little tan, yep. just an uh, inoffensive waterfall. Yep. Some stone seats. Guy comes around with sandwiches. Have it, yeah. Any? Can I get you anything? Yep. You know, hell, hell, hell on earth. Um, yeah. Walked in one day and they were like, "Hey, come on over. Let's have a meeting. We come have a meet. We're letting you go right now. Security's were you excited outside. Excited that pack you were your gonna shit. have a meeting, or was it like, yeah, this I just is bad. there was no. I mean, nothing. No warning. Nothing. It was like, oh, we're having a meeting, discussing. I don't know, some bullshit. Meeting. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, we're letting the bullshit you go. Was you <laughs> exactly? You're a sack of shit, and you yeah. need to leave immediately. So, like, security's standing over us. I'm packing my shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. But they gave us, which is remarkable, really, for this kind of hourly gig. They gave us two, I think, two months of severance. Damn. So they're like, we're gonna pay you for two months while you figure shit out. So yeah, at that point, I basically had started making these videos. I had transitioned from making like beats to having discovered Reggie Watts, right? Our dear friend and mentor. incredible innovator. Yeah. yeah. Mentor, <laughs> grandfather. Uh -huh. um, and he, yeah, basically he like b just opened my eyes to looping and improvising and he just blew my fucking but mind. But it's so odd because it seems like you were so you're like brimming with it i mean i guess so dude it's like not even something that it weirdly it does combine like both of these things it combines the training and music with the theater it's like a yeah. very much a blend of those but it's just not something i ever thought about you know it was like i just wanted to make music take myself seriously and shit and then i saw reggie doing his thing and i was like oh my god and then you realize that like looping really mirrors the process of making music like traditionally on logic or any DAW software like that. It's just much faster, more sort of rudimentary, but the uh, the elements are the same basically. Yeah. And you can just do it a lot faster. So, yeah, I I saw him doing that and I was like I must do something like this. You know, like I I have to try. 
And so, yeah, I got a looper and basically fucked around with it for a year while I was working this job, got let go. And then that's when I said, okay, I have two months. So I'm now going to see, and this was kind of at the end of, at this point, I'm like 28 and I had given up probably half a dozen times. You know what I mean? Just like, it's time to call it. One of those times is when I got my real estate license. I was like, it's, I just, I'm getting too old to like continue dreaming about this and I clearly don't have what it takes. Like yeah. I don't have the work ethic. I don't have. So I was like, all right, I have two months. Let's see if I can pay my rent by the end of the two months. If I can do that, I'll keep trying. If not, that's it. Big boy job. Grow the fuck up. Uh, yeah. And so I went around Dallas and like bothered bartenders for their boss's email and shit and sent them my little videos and got a Friday gig at this place. And then, um, basically doing the same shit I'm doing now. And I you would set, set up. up. Yeah. Cause some of the tape, some of the videos of you, I call them tapes. Cause I'm, yeah. a, I'm <laughs> 77 years young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of these videos, you look, they look like fucking Buffalo wild wings. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be in that girl's club. I want to be in that girl's club. Like they're not venues. They're not perfect. Maybe they are, but they don't <laughs> oh, look like venues. They're to not. Me. They're not venues. It's a restaurant or it's, uh, yeah, it's you like a brunch at, crowd. You're bothering people. Yes. Oh, 100%. Dude. You might as well be handing out flyers. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah. you're, it's not like it's like people are not like they're not there for you. They are a hundred percent not there for me. Often do not want me to be there. They would have preferred you try to sell them real estate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, than, exactly. Then you do what you were doing. I don't know that I am so ambitious. It's like I was uh, a pesticide salesman. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go to Lowe's and Home Depot stores and sell pesticides and tell people the punchline, which you kind of. We kind of figured. I don't know if you can tell that by looking at me, but. Uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can tell that by looking at me. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, and I started doing comedy as a hobby. And then I won a competition in Charleston. I made a thousand bucks. And then the next year, and in between that one and the next competition, I quit drinking. And then by the next year, I won the competition, like, by way more votes. And it's like, so. I was like, oh, I maybe I got something here. So I start trying to figure out how to make money doing comedy. But I don't know if it was so much ambition as it was, I hate the other job that I have. And if I can make money doing this, yeah. I mean, I always said, I don't need to be famous. If I can make a living doing this, then that's better than what I was doing. It's so it's a, such a much better way to do it. Yeah. Just like, just do you have a job that's better than selling pesticide not like regional a regional pesticide guy driving from parking lot to parking lot texting the guy that you're here yeah <laughs> and then and then so in so it makes you see comedy in a in a hell in a proportional way which is it's better than pesticide sales. Yeah, I mean, even when I was making less money, because it was a good job, right? I had health insurance. Yeah. I had a car allowance. I had, you know, I had a salary. Same hair, same beard, same glasses. Uh, I, well, I had this hair at one point. I did try to professional it up for a bit. Uh, I, You know, I cut my hair, tucked in the shirt. Sure. Wore a lot of khakis. Yep. I was really trying to do it for a minute, you know, uh -huh. but I was also drinking a lot. So what you had to do, you would have to drive to the Lowe's store and then go inside and you had to call in on the Lowe's phone to, you know, and to a system. That way they knew you checked into that store. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do it from your cell phone. That was like the way to get yourself fired instantly if you called in from your cell phone. Okay. But I would be so I had that part wrong. But yeah. you did have I knew you yes. had to call in. But I would be hungover. So I would go show up, call in on the Lowe's phone, and then go back out to my car and sit and smoke cigarettes and listen to the radio for an hour and then go back in. You know? Oh, so you were there, so you didn't even have to you didn't you weren't there to sell to the store, you were there to just sell in the store. Yeah, set up displays, yeah. do things like that. But it's like a lot of times you go in and you're like there's nothing really to do today. This store is set up. It looks. I good. was. I just spent three days at a Lowe's last week on a commercial, and it wasn't crowded. 
Yeah. Like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the morning. It's just not it's like it's just not the busy time. Yeah, I mean, I had it all mapped out. I mean, there was one store in a place called Vidalia, Georgia, Mm -hmm. where it was really far to get there for me. And they had a great buffet basically behind the Lowe's. I would go clock in. Why? Well, it was a restaurant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't just some guy (laughs) out there. Yeah. So I would go clock in, walk through the store, go, it looks good. I would find some employee. I would go, you guys do a great job here. I really appreciate it. And then leave, go to the buffet, eat, come back, clock out, go to the next store. And did it matter that you hadn't sold any pesticide? No, no one. In fact, that store would prefer I didn't do anything in their store. They were like, we know what we want to do in here. We don't want you messing up anything. So I would, so it would be great. Great. And then comedy is, is better than that. Yes. Yes. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen. <laughs>